Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So today we're talking about security tokens. I'm gonna to talk about what security tokens are, you know, how they work, and how you can create one. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and put the like button down below. And also, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So what are security tokens? Well, before we explain that, let's just clarify what a token is in general. So Ethereum is a blockchain that allows you to create tokens with smart contracts. And that's a huge advantage because it allows you to create a cryptocurrency without having to create a new blockchain. And you're able to launch your own token or cryptocurrency uh, with smart contracts, which are just programs that are written and deployed to the blockchain. And they govern like how your token works and behaves and things like that. So you might be really familiar with ERC-20 tokens. Um, these are pretty famous. If you go to a website like coinmarketcap.com, you know, you can see a huge list of ERC-20 tokens. That so what's a security token? Well, I mentioned the ERC-20 standard for ERC-20 tokens, which you might be familiar with. Um, and ERC-20 is a standard that has governed uh, lots of tokens called utility tokens, right? And I want to talk about what a utility token is before I talk about a security token so you can see how they're different and you'll understand like what a utility token is and what a security token is. So a lot of the ICOs that have happened in the past few years um, have been for quote-unquote utility tokens. So what is that? Well, a utility token is basically a token that gives you some sort of um, functionality in an ecosystem. So you see this a lot with ICOs. They say, we want to raise funds to create a project, like let's say a cryptocurrency exchange or something like that. And the token inside, the, the token that you're raising funds for is actually going to give you uh, some, some value inside the ecosystem. So like an exchange, for example, you could you know hold their token and get discounts on fees. Or you might be able to pay the, the fees in the cryptocurrency exchange with the token that you purchase for them. And that's incentive, you know, for you to hold the token and it's incentive for you to buy it in an initial coin offering. That's the utility in a utility token, right? So let's talk about a security token, which is different, right? It fundamentally works a different way. So a utility, sorry, a security token um, is basically a token that is meant to represent a uh, assets. It's meant to represent either part of, you know, a bigger asset or the whole thing. So examples might be shares in a company or uh, a piece of real estate or part of a piece of real estate, right? That's what we call tokenizing assets. Basically, we can take, you know, an asset and, and create shares of that, which have traditionally been used with just, you know, regular old stocks or something like that. And um, we created digital versions of those things with smart contracts. And that's what a utility, sorry, that's what a security token is. It's something that allows you to, you know, actually hold fractional shares in an asset like that. And they can tokenize it and divide it up and, you know, different people can hold different amounts and things like that, right? So this is a really cutting edge technology and this is something that people are saying could potentially be a big trend for 2019 in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space. And we're starting to see standards for security tokens emerge. And I'm going to talk about that here in a minute and actually kind of walk you through one of those standards and actually take a look at some of the code um, and how it works and how you could create something like that. So basically, you know, if we can tokenize digital assets with security tokens, it gives you some advantage over traditional financial systems like, you know, transparency and, and trustlessness that you can get from using distributed ledger technologies like the Ethereum blockchain. Okay. Um, and let's talk about, you know, sort of how the security token works and some of its characteristics uh, versus the other types of tokens uh, in a little more detail. So, a, a security token will work somewhat like an ERC-20 token in that it'll have a standard that'll talk about you know, how it can be traded and spent and things like that. Um, but it will also have some features of um, some of the crypto collectibles you might have seen out there um, where, the, where the actual uh, tokens or, or shares have an ID. And we call this uh, a non-fungible token. Right, so that's a token that actually has a specific value versus an ERC-20 token, which is worth the same as every other token. And I don't wanna get too into too many details about that. Um, it can get kind of technical pretty fast. You can watch some of the other videos on my channel where I talk about non-fungible tokens and fungible tokens and things like that. But basically, 
a security token needs to be able to know, um, you know, who owns which shares and things like that. So it has a lot of functionality built into it that makes it work. And I'll walk you through more of that when we get to the code part of this video. So um, let's talk about the, and let's talk about the standard that's coming out. So I'm going to walk you through one of the proposed standards. There are certain standards that are sorting to kind of determine how these things should be built, particularly on Ethereum. And there, there are teams that are kind of weighing the pros and cons of each types of standard. Um, hopefully we'll see a standard emerge kind of like ERC-20 that came out that'll be kind of a clear winner um, that describes how security tokens work. And... You know, this article here, you can look at uh, the securitytokenstandard.org. It's actually a web page that talks about uh, security tokens. And, you know, they talk about this need for a standard. So that's exactly right. We need, a st we need a standard that governs how these things work so that they're interoperable, that they'll work with wallets and whatever technology we decide to build around um, these security tokens so that they can be widely adopted. And one of the standards that's emerging um, is there's a few, but the one I go through today is called uh, the ERC 1400 standard, and this is some code that describes you know how it work. So I'll walk you through that right now. I've got some code pulled up in my text editor here, and this is going to show you you know how this pro code is proposed to work, and this will kind of give you an idea of what the characteristics of a token are like, and you know how you could create something like this. Um, so basically. If you remember the old ERC-20 standard, you can check the balance. You can see who has, you know, a certain amount of these things. And they're divided by a tranche or a tranche, however you decide to pronounce that. And basically that's going to be the, the fragment, the fraction of the share or the asset or something like that when it's subdivided. And basically, you're always going to keep track of that. And that's going to be mapped to a particular holder, which is going to be just an address, an Ethereum address. And we can see who that is. Um, you know, you can also see, uh, you know, how many this person has and things like that. You can get a whole list of them. Um, and you can basically have some code that executes transfers, just like you would any other type of asset that you can trade. You can transfer it yourself, um, and that's what these functions are. And you can also allow someone else to do it, kind of like... Uh, the ERC-20 tokens do on cryptocurrency exchanges or something like that. You can approve someone else to spend the tokens for you. Um, and you can also see uh, some other features about this, like uh, getting the defaults and setting the defaults for the tranches, and also getting more um, information about the token and things like that. So you can also see some events that are triggered down here anytime that these tokens are transferred or... Um, in time the the tranche is changed so i highly recommend that you kind of browse this yourself to get a little deeper dive and to understand exactly how this works and these standards and and see if you can kind of determine the pros and cons of a standard like this and do some other research on the other standards that are coming out and emerging and seeing you know if you can uh any shed light onto how these work and how they can be improved that's the cool thing about this space is you know we can see all this stuff develop in real time and we have the ability to actually weigh in on the discussion and say hey this works better than that and if you can bring up valid points then you know you can contribute to the future of this technology and where it's headed so that's all I got for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Again, um, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. Again, if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the like button down below. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.